<laughs> They're working hard. Time to check out of Fiji. Lots of paperwork to be done. And the nice thing about Fiji is they know how to give you a good send off. Committed a crime or something. All these people here. Okay, thank you, Vinaka. All this was quite emotional and actually made me feel very sad to leave. Although I'd had a bad time of it in Fiji earlier on, as you've probably seen from previous videos, bouncing around the reefs in some not nice weather, this was different. This was how I wished Fiji'd been for me. Anyway, maybe next time. She always goes fast in, in, in enclosed spaces, but not at sea. Oh, my, come on. All right, there's somebody coming in now. There always is one little motorboat. Okay. There's the bar. Getting some wind coming now, which is really nice. Uh, hopefully we can uh, get the sails up. It's a long way to the end of the reef. The reef is way down there. I think it's something like 20 miles. It's a long way. And the route I've chosen is the less congested. With I should be able to accept the sails, get hydro going and uh, relax. God, it's, it's cooler out here. It is so hot in that marina. Anybody on board? These friends of mine. That's a beautiful boat. It's actually for sale, but I can't afford it. Right, I've got to get through these boats now. I've got to pay attention. Then all of a sudden, peace and quiet. And we're under sail. This is the kind of day I like. Got the plotter there, keeping an eye on exactly what I'm uh, running into or not. It was safe at the moment. Uh, just had a cold drink, got the shirt off, and we've got the sails up. She's just going on about four knots, more or less in the right direction. That'll do me. Always takes much longer than you think prepping a boat. I was up at 6.30 this morning, I had so much to get through. Um, and then there were jobs, I thought, oh, I should have done that two days ago or whatever, and then more jobs. Uh, make sure the engine was going to start. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing checking out the country and having the engine not start. Uh, so yes, touch wood so far all good and it's very pleasant and I did say to to the fates and the gods or whoever might be out there please let's let's just have a nice passage this time. No dramas, let's just have a nice pleasant passage please. And so far so good and we've got a big reef to go through at the end down here in about uh, another 20 miles so trying to get to there before nightfall. Once I'm in open sea, I can relax. I need to secure the anchor a bit better. I put a pin through her to hold her uh, for the passage, but I'm gonna wait till we're uh, through the reef. I reckon if I bolt it all up, stow it, I might need it. If I don't, I won't. Right of falling asleep. I've been on the go since 6.30 this morning. That's why I'm not being keen with a lot of sailing around here. You can't relax. You fall asleep, you, you go on a reef. I have to stay awake now for the next, I don't know, 18 hours or something. change in the weather the sun's just come back out again but it had gone for a while certainly up there there's some clouds uh, doing something look like there might be some power underneath them off to starboard is the reef you can just see it in the distance there county's catching the wind we're getting into open sea the marker is somewhere over there and there's another one there so i've got to go in between the two this will be a final goodbye to fiji
Once we're out through that reef, we should be on our way. Out there is freedom. Hi Joe, what are you doing up there? I'm dancing, I'm free, free, free. Yippee! Taking in a reef for the night, uh, whether it needs it or not, is the custom uh, we have on this boat because the last thing you want to do is get up in the middle of the night and have to tend the sails. Got to pull the out hole out for that reef. This one. Okay, that should be it for the mainsail. The Genoa I'll leave. Uh, it's not fully out at the moment anyway, but I can adjust that, pull that in uh, if things blow up a bit during the night from the cockpit, so it's, it's not a problem. Uh, plus at the moment I need the power uh, to get us through this uh, little bit of sea here. Still a bit too close to land for my liking. I'm really wanting to have a rest. I know I'll fall asleep, I'm far too close to the land. It was good I reefed up the sails before dark, because that night, things got a bit more sporty. It's windy, but it's beautiful. There's a trade-off to be made when you're single-handed. You have to keep a watch, that's a said, but you also have to have your sleep. And it comes to a point where uh, sleep deprivation can be dangerous. You make mistakes, uh, if you're overtired, you can't concentrate, and that is a bad thing. So you just have to stop and sleep sometimes. The solution that night was, with my alarms turned on of course, was to catnap in the cockpit. Taking short bursts of a deep snoozing seemed to do the job. Kind of woke up and uh, sorted myself out. I caught sight of a shark, a big fella, circling around me as I sailed. First thing I thought was, don't fall off the boat now, Barry. Okay taking stock of things I could see that the sea had actually come up quite a bit so I decided to put up my uh, little wave barrier thing that I've used a few times before to good effect it won't stop it it'll slow it down it's getting a bit sporty out there especially on that side of the boat winds changed a bit I've had a couple coming over uh, the top there into the cockpit already I just don't want any waves going down there now that would be bad yeah, I was having a siesta down here and got sprayed twice. In the middle of having my coffee on the fourth day, 
Uh, I've got a lack of places to put my cup. It's sat there at the moment. There's boiling coffee in there, so I have to be careful. The boat's rolling like a pig. Um, but I'm feeling much better today. And the wind's changed a bit. Uh, it's going to come down a lot to a point we might run out of wind. So I'm going to change tack. I'm going to change the angle of the boat right now. Yeah, get the boat reset up for the day and then I can chillax. Uh, I can't really come round any further with the sails on that side of the boat. So I'm going to jibe the boat. That's uh, turn the boat through the wind with the wind behind. Um, that's, that's easy to do with the double sheet system here. And I've got to, I've got to do the four sheet at the same time. Right. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I'm pretty much on course. Um, but I, I have the wind directly behind me. I can't get the foresail to fly properly. I'm going to have to put a spinnaker pole out. Still got a fair bit of swell, and that's not helping me at all. But it is from behind now. See, so yeah, I'm going to roll him in and see what happens. We need a happy sail, not a stressful one. Putting the pole out involves an awful lot of work. These days with added experience, I sit down sometimes and just try and figure things out before I actually do them. Uh, and that can end up saving you time and stop you from getting things wrong. It's that kind of thing. Whoa, this, okay. But of course, sometimes it just does go wrong. The sail suddenly backed on itself, meaning the wind was now the wrong side. There's always like, on my boat when things go wrong and I have to turn the camera off. And that's just the nature of this. When you're by yourself, you can you can, you don't have to control your emotions. You can let loose. Uh, right. But I'm all calm now because I think I have conquered. I always get there in the end. It's just a hard road sometimes. And what's happening is this: this the tail end of the boat. I think you can see it rolling behind me. Um, I had it all set up. There's a big old wave lifted the tail of the boat up, and it it ruined everything because we're on a fine edge here, sailing exactly downwind. And on a flat sea, it's fine. But when you're on a, a, a piece of sea that's like a, a road full of potholes, I mean, look, you can see the boat moving about now. Um, this is just the normal ones. Then you get the big ones come through. And it, it throws everything out of kilter, if you will. Um, yeah, so I've kind of set on this. Uh, I've got the, uh, the main out there. And I've just got a bit of head sail like that for the moment. Um, seems to be kind of working. I'm not a very good sailor. I don't understand the, the technicals of it sometimes. So when something works, that's what I do. I leave it like that. This all sounds like I know what I'm talking about, but I make this stuff up as I go along. Rolling, rolling. Rolly, rolly, rolly. Right, as a treat, I'm gonna pull myself out. I've got a can of English breakfast, full English. I like bacon, tomatoes, beans, mushrooms, yummo. And it's the first day I'm not me feeling sick, so all good. Too much jiggling about and not enough wind. Wow, couldn't find my cans of ready-made English breakfast, so making my own can of mushrooms, can of beans, and a bit of ham in there. Yes. Gonna be having that with some of the family sauce. Yes. Oh. Yes, I deserve this. That's the good thing about being sick at sea. I mean, I wasn't physically sick. I just felt ill for three and a half days. But on the fourth day, I'm always good. And uh, it's a pleasure to be able to eat properly again. Looks nice and cozy below. I'm going to uh, turn in for the night. It's supposed to come down, uh, but it's not. It's still a little bit rough and blowy. We're hard on the wind. Uh, we've actually only got a hundred nautical miles to go. We've done very well. Um, and I know there's no wind tomorrow and it's also Sunday, so we're gonna find somewhere to hang out. Uh, there's quite a lot of wind out there. It's not too rough, but the boat's bouncing again, so I've got to be careful how I move around the place. I mentioned that I was probably going to arrive on a Sunday. Many little islands and small countries don't do customs and immigration on a Sunday. Or if they do, they charge you extra for it. So here I am, I've actually got the boat actually going fast for a change, but I've got to slow down. I've got to spend Sunday somewhere out at sea and arrive on a Monday morning.
Just want to mention something about the scenes that you've just been watching. If you look down the centre of the boat, you can see two red webbings. Uh, they're my safety lines, or jack lines, if some people would call them. I have them running down the centre of the boat, and I've been an advocate of this for many years and try to talk people out of putting safety lines down the sides of their boat. If they're on the side of the boat, down on the decks, you still can fall off a boat. Uh, a full-sized adult, when they're unconscious, dragging alongside a boat, you're not going to be able to pull them out before they drown. That's a fact. Nothing on my side decks except uh, this fellow. Making my way aft attached to the centre of the boat and on my hands and knees. Keep your centre of gravity low. Always good to get back to the safety of the cockpit. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Join us next time when we arrive on an island full of volcanic mayhem. Join us for that. Many, many thanks indeed for watching. Please subscribe and press the notifications bell. Many thanks to my patrons for keeping this whole project afloat. Thank you so very, very much. Please leave me a thumbs up and leave some comments if you like. I love reading those. I'm on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, take good care of yourselves. <laughs>